I'm excited to have this opportunity to talk with you today about some of the basic sources of Irish research. The ones that we focus on to begin with are census and census substitutes, church records, and civil registration of birth, marriage, and death. And in this presentation, we're first going to discuss civil registration records. Ireland had a, a different system of organizing their civil registration records. People who were Protestant or even those of mixed religion who married in the Church of Ireland, those Protestant marriages were registered as early as 1845. But it wasn't until 1864 that all births, marriages, and deaths were registered with the government. This is one of the sources, by the way, that is on the Family Search website. We'll discuss that in a few minutes. To give you an idea of the content of Irish civil registration records, I have three different slides that summarize the information that should be on these records, starting with births. You get the name of the individual, whether that child was a male or female, when and where they were born, the father's name, his occupation, and residence. And if by chance the father happened to be deceased, that should be noted as well. You get the maiden name of the mother, and then details about the informant. It's very important to pay attention to the information about the informant, because often those people are related. Sometimes in that column for the information, it will state that they're the grandfather or an aunt or something like that. But it doesn't always do that. If the informant has the same surname as the father or the mother, that might be a clue to you that that person is related. So it's important to make sure that you get all of that information down. Another thing to note, in the birth indexes themselves, after 1927, the maiden surname of the mother is listed in those columns of birth indexes. So that sometimes is very useful to you if you're trying to trace a specific family, and maybe the mother's surname is somewhat uncommon. Um, if you're looking through the column of people in the index for that surname, trying to find other children, you can match it up by the maiden surname of the mother. It's unfortunate that Northern Ireland did not include this information, but the counties in the Republic of Ireland has that. Irish marriage records list the names of the bride and the groom. There's a column for the ages, but oftentimes, especially if they're a minor, it will just say minor, or it might just say full age, so that person was at least 21 years of age, and who knows how old if it only says full age. It also lists the occupations of the couple. Usually it's the groom that has the occupation. The bride often is um, still residing at home or something and doesn't have an occupation. It lists their places of residence by townland or by town or city. And sometimes in a city it might give you an address. It lists the names and occupations of the fathers of the bride and the groom. If the fathers are deceased, it sometimes is noted in that marriage record. Then it gives you the date and place of marriage and also the names of witnesses. The marriage place is important to note because a couple usually marries in the parish of the bride, and that might give you another clue as to where the bride's side of the family resided. Death records are not as useful because the information is limited. You get the name of the individual who died, the age, the person's occupation, if it was a child, it might say son of farm, a farmer or something like that. 
the marital condition of the individual that died, the date and place of death, duration and cause of death, and details about the informant. And again, make note of the fact that there may be a relationship listed for that informant. I'm not sure exactly when it happened. I know it's been at least a year ago, if not longer. But County Waterford has placed online the abstracted death records for their county from 1863 through 1901. Um, it's not the full scanned image, but it's information that is extremely useful. And you might want to consider using that free website if you have people in County Waterford. You can order online civil registration records. And these are the websites where you can do the ordering. Northern Ireland will only have records from 1922 forward, because that's when Northern Ireland became its own country. It also has earlier marriage records from what I was told. I've never been to the registration office, so I can't verify that you probably would be better off going through the Republic of Ireland, which has the records for all of Ireland. There's an easy way that you can do that by using the Family Search website, https colon backslash backslash familysearch.org. In addition to abstracted records of births or baptisms from 1620 to 1881, deaths from 16, 1864 to 1870, which is when the death records that the Family History Library filmed ended, and Irish marriages from 1619 to 1898. Now those span of years cover both church records and civil registration records. The civil registration records that it covers for births is only from 1864 to 1881, because that's when civil registration began. The same for the deaths. As I mentioned, the Family History Library has the microfilm copies of the death records for that span of years. And the marriages for Protestant beginning in 1845, and for Catholic and all other marriages in 1864. And those civil registration records of marriage end in 1870, which is the last year that they had filmed. The indexes from 1845 to 1958 are online. So you can actually go to the Family Search website and do research in the birth, marriage, and death indexes for your Irish ancestors. It gives you the volume and the page number as well as the district where the event took place. That information is needed when you order through the online services for the Republic of Ireland, because those are the indexes that are in Dublin, not indexes that are in Belfast, which would be different. Moving on to church records. When you have ancestors who were born or married or died before your civil registration time period, church records are the key source that you need to document your families. In addition, church records often have additional information that might not be recorded in the civil registration records. So it's important that you not only document them in civil registration records, but you should also document those same ancestors in the church records. Just as an example, I have seen some Methodist marriage records that have lists of the people that were there that are considered to be the witness. So in a civil registration marriage record, you have two witnesses. In a Methodist church marriage record, you could have 10, 12, who knows how many names listed as people who were witnesses to the marriage. Sometimes in Catholic marriage records, it might give information about where 
the child was christened. Um, sometimes in christening records of Catholic churches or baptism records, um, and this is closer to the 19th century time period or the 20th century time period. Sometimes in those baptism records, the priest makes a note of the marriage that took place of that individual in a different country. So again, you sometimes find surprising information in the church records, and it's important to document them both in civil records and church records. Church records, normally, if, if we had longer for the webinar, I might have had Jeff ask the question, what do church records contain? And most people think in terms of parish registers, the records of the births or christenings, of the marriages, and of the deaths or burials of individuals. But there are so many more resources in church records. The Church of Ireland has marriage license indexes and some marriage license records. The marriage licenses are one of those resources that were housed in Dublin and were destroyed in 1922, but there have been some that were turned in or that were salvaged, so sometimes there are some marriage licenses that you might find for your ancestors if they happen to be married by license in the Church of Ireland. Mixed marriages that took place, sometimes you'll find a marriage license for that. Or if the groom, for example, belonged to the military, he was in the army, his unit was going to be transferred to another place, they might have taken out a marriage license to get married because that was a quick way to be able to get married. If a couple married by bands, their names were read out over the pulpit over a period of weeks, and then if there was no opposition to the marriage, the couple could get married. But a marriage license was a quick way to ensure that a marriage took place in a timely manner. So you do find people of other religions in those marriage licenses. The indexes will give you the year that the index or that the license was taken out, but that does not give you proof that the marriage took place. Vestry and session minutes. The Church of Ireland had a group of men that helped the minister in overseeing the affairs of the parish, and that group of men was called the Vestry. The Presbyterian Church had a similar group of men that helped oversee the affairs of the parish, and that group was called the session. When these people would meet, minutes were made of their meetings. During those meetings, any number of things could be discussed. For example, I saw one where the bell tower of the Church of Ireland had been damaged during a storm. I think lightning had hit it, if I remember correctly and they discussed repairing that bell tower and decided to take up a collection. Names of the people in the parish who donated to that collection for the repair of the bell tower were mentioned in the vestry minutes. In the session minutes, the Presbyterian Church had very strict codes as far as morality, and a lot of times you'll find in the session minutes details about women who became pregnant out of wedlock, and so they were called before the session, and information is recorded about the woman, sometimes about the man who is the father of her child, um, details about the relief of poor people, money that might have been donated, goods that might have been do donated, care that was given to somebody that was sick and had nobody else to care for them and was appointed by the session to perform that job. So those types of minutes can be very, very informative. Fortunately for the Church of Ireland, the vestry minutes were not records that were required to be sent in to Dublin for safekeeping. Prior to 1922, when the Church of Ireland decided that those records needed to be sent to Dublin, the only exception was if the minister